This video contains unsettling content and violent content. Viewer discretion advised. Have you ever met that one bad guy that you actually kinda like? They're still trying to kill you, but they're just so enjoyable to fight or they look so awesome that you almost forget to kill them. This list is dedicated to the most unforgettable, the best baddies, the top 30 coolest enemies in games. Sligs, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. This is what you get when you combine a pig and a slug. Not really, but you get the idea. A slig is the main security drone of Rapture Farms, and are often seen sporting a machine gun, infrared visor and mechanical pants, without which they would be completely harmless, crawling along the floor. But with this arsenal in hand, they make quite the formidable force. Their intelligence is matched only by the words they can speak, which is not much at all. But despite their ineptitude, sligs are surprisingly fun to watch and listen to. Their short chuckles of amusement are endearing, and watching them hit Mudokan slaves is a guilty pleasure. Even the way they walk is cool, if unsettling. But this all comes to a head once you possess the buggers and walk around in their pants. Sligs are awesome to control. Finally, you get the looks. You speak the language and you can call their attack dogs, otherwise known as slogs, and you can mow down anyone in your path with a weapon. You'd almost leave them alone once you've had your fun, but then you discover that they can explode. General Vermin, Battletoads Arcade. Battletoads has, arguably, one of the most iconic game art styles out there, which means that every single enemy in the game is designed in a way that gives them a cartoony, yet badass look. Sort of along the lines of the 90s cartoons of the same era. Battletoads also has, as was also common to that era, humanoid rats that look kinda like buff guys but also kinda like, well, rats. General Vermin are a splinter group of this rat phenomenon, and they're honestly the peak of humanoid rat performance. They have long claws on their huge feet, a solid six, or perhaps an eight, pack, pecs that would outshine those of the rock, and arms that have so many veins popping out of them that they would be a veritable goldmine for the blood donor center. Their faces are pure rat, with cunning eyes and a smirk on their snouts that suggest a constantly evil series of thoughts at work. They're certainly not to be sniffed at as enemies, and they can take a good deal of attacks before they are finally toppled. One of the ways you can take them down is also super satisfying. All you have to do is take a good reach down to their fuzzy rat balls and start punching with the other hand, leading to some hilarious facial expressions and their eventual disappearances. Perhaps they left to start a new life in the sewer with some turtle wards. Stranger things have happened. Assassins, Borderlands, the secret armory of General Nox DLC. There are good and bad responses to campaigns that use sexism as their platform. A good response would be, say, a public address denouncing the prior comments. A bad response, however, is one that involves the torture and biological restructuring of a collection of young women into deadly weapons. As is expected though, in the Borderlands, it is often the bad response that is the one applied to any given scenario. To help alleviate the discord caused by the comments made by Admiral Mikey that are along the lines of, Girls are stupid, the Atlas Corporation decided it would be great to abduct a couple of young girls and turn them into the Crimson Lance Assassins. While this proved to be ultimately unhelpful for Admiral Mikey's campaign, it turned out to be very useful for Atlas as the Lance Assassins became one of the most competent and dangerous enemies in their arsenal, with their plasma swords, shurikens, and their lack of compassion after being forced to murder their parents, they can prove to be quite the formidable force, but with a couple of well-aimed sniper shots, they're easy enough to take down. Their appearance is sleek and mechanical, with skin-tight suits and a helmet with almond-shaped orange eyes. While they look pretty badass, the story behind them is pretty haunting, but hey, at least it gives us some cool chicks to fight, right? Giant Magini, Resident Evil 5 
You thought the crocodiles were bad in the water, but there are worse things that await you on land. The natives, uprooted from their home by Western scientists who created the early Plagas virus, were subsequently mutated in later experiments and left behind to be forgotten. The giant Magini is an imposing three meters tall who wears an elaborately decorated headdress made of stone and wood, strong enough to block bullets. They stock up to you with great confidence and swing at you with their spiked club, which, I should add, is made of skulls. Their design is obviously cool, but what is also pretty swell is how they couldn't care less who they hit. Get them into tight spaces with other tribesmen and they'll well on them just as much as you. Well, almost. Suffice it to say that these enemies are one of the few really cool things to come out of Resident Evil 5. Replica Assassins Fear 2, Project Origin. Some of the deadliest ninjas in video games, replica assassins are quick, lethal, and often invisible. They use the darkness to their advantage and are given away by the shimmer of light from their movement. It's almost like you're fighting ghosts, which wouldn't be such a stretch for this game, but in this case, they really can pack a punch. Keep an ear out for the sound of their breathing as they run, or if you're still not confident, keep punching in the air in front of you. If you hit one, an electrical zap will sound, and they'll appear briefly for you to land a shot or two. Beneath the cloak, they wear all black bodysuits, padded armor, and red lenses over their eyes so they can keep track of their targets. These things can move so fast that it is near impossible to shoot them without using your slow motion ability, and they can climb on any surface so they can literally pop out of anywhere. If this description alone didn't convey just how badass they are, I don't know what will. Blood Mount, Gears of War 2. Remember when you were a kid and you'd come up with mythical creatures you'd love to have as a pet? Common answers include dragons, unicorns, phoenixes, and possibly a Cerberus if you were a fan of getting really creative. Well, the Blood Mount is the pinnacle of all these mythical creatures that would have been made highly impractical but awesome companions. Used as the premier mode of transportation by the Locust Horde, they are muscular menaces and put up a formidable fight. Almost vaguely dog-like, but with huge talons at the front of their bodies and a creepy mask with glowing eyes on it, the blood mounts are a sight to behold. Should their helmets be knocked off, you'll get to witness a rather sad-looking boar face that still looks like it could eat you for breakfast, but also looks like it would make a great horse substitute. If you manage to shoot their riders, they will continue on, mouths ready to take a huge chunk out of anyone who gets the least bit too close to them, either their talons or their teeth. It has to be noted that the internet is filled to the brim with glitches that have allowed people to ride the blood mounts, which proves their popularity as one of the coolest looking enemies out there. However, I would perhaps recommend if you're in the market for a mythical creature for your child, you avoid the blood mount. A dragon probably requires far less maintenance. Yaogwe, Sleeping Dogs, Nightmare in North Point DLC. When you've got an enemy that is fairly rare, tough to kill, and whose name literally means demon, it's generally accepted as fact that they're going to have to be pretty impressive. Yaogui are originally from Chinese mythology, though their portrayal in Sleeping Dogs is closer to a Western representation of a devil, with goat horns and a more humanoid appearance than they have in their original myths. With their glowing blue eyes and satyr-like appearance, they make for quite the formidable foe, and they cannot be taken down by just normal attacks. If you should try to run them over, they will just spawn on top of your vehicle and pull you off of it, which makes for some poop-your-pants Kodak moments. The only way to defeat the Yagwe is to drink a special herbal tea and fill up the face meter, or use one of the demon swords. Eventually, you'll be able to take them down, but it sure does make you wonder about the contents of that tea. Storm Achenak, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion In this world, there are few simple pleasures. One of these is finding a pile of rocks in the plains of Oblivion that have been bound together with lightning magic to make a Storm Achenak. Often found guarding the gates to Oblivion, they are tall, seemingly impenetrable rock formations that have been formed into the rough image of a humanoid with delicate spider webs of lightning encompassing their whole bodies. They have numerous attacks, including throwing bolts of lightning, mean right hooks, storm blasts that can knock the player right into oblivion, <laughs> and turning into an almost invulnerable tornado of rocks and anger, which is pretty awesome to watch. They're like an even better version of Benjamin Grimm, and with less psychological trauma. 
Possibly the coolest thing about the Storm Atronax, though, is your ability to summon them after you become a Master Conjurer. It takes the meaning of pet rock to a whole new level, especially as they're very effective in crushing your enemies where they stand. Warden, Saints Row 4 In a game series with giant purple dildo weaponry and alien butt probes, sometimes it can be difficult to implement things that people look at and think, No, that's just badass. However, enemies that are really hard to fight, but also give you superpowers when defeated, would fit this description. And that's exactly what the Wardens from the fourth installment of this series do. A part of the Zen Empire, the Wardens are enormous, muscular terrorists with sharp alien teeth, enormous claws on both hands and feet, and glowing insides that betray what awesome power you get to absorb when you kill them. Incredibly strong with laser rifles, and also the ability to use a number of superpowers, including telekinesis, super jumping, blasting, and stomping, they are well equipped to handle almost anything you can throw at them. On top of all this, after the battle of the first of their numbers, they are then granted shields that are invulnerable to everything but super attacks. They can be taken out using your newfound abilities and some well-timed attacks when their shield goes down. The most awesome thing about Wardens though, is when you do knock their health down enough to go into the quick time death event, which lets you finish them off using a number of button prompts. This great little addition of what is essentially a fatality move is so satisfying, and allows you to walk away from the battle with your head held high, and your new superpower coursing through your veins. Junk Titan, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed Kazdan Paratus's strong junk golems held together by the Force itself, Junk Titans are colossal with the head of a vulture droid and a body made from the scrap of various ships and robots. With one arm, it can hurl random junk at others, and with the other, wield a club that not only hurts a lot, but can also be used to create guardians to fend off attackers. Four can be found on Raxus Prime, but after the demise of their creator, do not appear again. A shame, considering how cool they are in concept and to fight in general. Even with how Starkiller destroys one, ripping its club off and impaling its body with the limb is pretty cool on its own. Junk Titans fit the scene perfectly, and they are certainly not trash. Archduke, Saints Row, Gat Outta Hell Dropping down from the burning sky into the battlefield is the Archduke, the most powerful demon in Hell. It summons a flame sword and a shield for the fight, but those aren't the only tricks up its sleeve. The Archduke can teleport in a blazing haze right on top of the player and set them alight. One swing of their mighty weapon can knock you clean off your feet and across the room. If the Archduke is good at anything, it's making you feel powerless, especially in groups. They turn up for the attack decked out in sweet pentagram armor and proceed to kick your butt to heaven and back. These guys literally wipe the floor with the blood of their enemies, so do your best not to end up as a stain. Carriers, Gears of War 4. Carriers are, if you'll pardon my French, absolutely freaking terrifying. Enormous, bulked out, vaguely human things with huge arms and no skin, leaving only their exposed flesh and muscle visible, they are honestly one of the grossest and coolest things in the Gears of War series. This appearance is made all the more off-putting by their glowing eyes and alarmingly sharp teeth. They bear a striking resemblance to a certain organ in the human body, and generally things in games that look like organs are pretty damn awesome to look at, but also really unsettling. As they lumber towards you using their arms to drag themselves, there's not much to do but back behind cover and shoot as much as possible, preferably before they start throwing bright orange goo from their bodies which may or may not have some close relation to molten lava. The only time the carriers become truly vulnerable is when they open their chests up to shoot projectiles called cankers at you and your team, so get in quick with your weapon when they do that and give them a few shots. Cankers work like grenades, so it's best to stay as far away from the attacks as possible. Fortunately, carriers aren't super common in the game, so if you're lucky, 
They may crop up only once a month. Dark Nuts, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess One of the darker installments in The Legend of Zelda series, Twilight Princess is full of twists, turns and some pretty awesome enemies, and Dark Nuts are a perfect example of this. Modelled on Roman centurions, they make for quite imposing figures. Their entire armour is edged with gold symbols on the black metal, giving them a regal appearance, and their plumed helmets also suggests that they might have been once of a high rank. This being said, in the game there are a number of dark nuts with varying colours and levels of armour, so perhaps they were once all in different ranks of some long forgotten army. Link only encounters the dark nuts later in the game, and this is fortunate as they are pretty tough cookies. With their incredible defence capabilities, it is advisable to take them down as strategically as possible using your jump attacks and explosives to penetrate their heavy armour. Although the Dark Nuts have a different appearance from game to game, once they lose their outer shells in Twilight Princess, they are very much the picture of an upstanding knight from many, many moons ago. Therefore, taking one down feels like quite the honour, and with the difficulty of the battle, an accomplishment too. Phase Commander, Fear 3 These enemies are extremely tough and can easily cut down Point Man or Fettle with their high powered HV penetrators if caught off guard. They do this with their phasing device which allows them to pass through solid matter and ambush their prey, but this also serves to make them incredibly intimidating. Their powerful voices will echo in your head, demoralising you with insults it can back up these threats too, seeing as they have been heavily augmented and their power armour which not only gives them superior power, but strong shields that can take a beating. This and their strategic manoeuvring in battle makes them well rounded enemies to engage and satisfying to bring down. But that's only half the fun. As Petal, you can possess them once their shields have been dropped and listen to the panicked dialogue of the commander's men as their superior starts cutting them down. You don't get to phase, as the suit has a failsafe against that, but wielding their absolute power alone is just… well, cool. And once you're done with them, just click the self destruct button and watch the fireworks. Striders, Half-Life 2 The Combine's main combatant against ground assault units, the Strider, is a tall synthetic walking battle tank. Supported by three spindly legs in appearance, they can traverse any terrain from city streets to surrounding country outside City 17. The ends of their limbs are deadly weapons, able to impale anyone foolish enough to get too close. Their domed heads support a rapid-fire pulse cannon against troops whilst it destroys heavy infantry and enemy buildings with its deadlier warp cannon. From the moment they are first seen after leaving the train station plaza, Striders become memorable for their unique design compared to their other enemies in the game as well as the strange, almost sympathetic noises they make. But what makes them ultimately cool is their intimidating presence and the heated battles to be had with them that mark most of the high points in the game. Their detailed reactions to being hurt, their adaptive abilities when encountered in different terrains, and the mournful cry they make as they are cut down make them feel like a real, living, breathing enemy simply cool on so many levels. Blood Dragon, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. You know what's cool? 1980s action movies. You know what else is cool? Dragons. And what's even cooler than these two things? Combining them and deciding that the blood of the dragons can power your awesome weapons after you complete an epic battle with them. In all three of these categories, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, sure does deliver, and the Blood Dragons are the pinnacle of it all. They're towering serpent-like creatures with bioluminescent skin, gaping mouths with glowing teeth, and lasers that shoot out of their eyes. Their skin color determines their mood, sort of like mood rings, but infinitely cooler. And their blood has the potential to be weaponized, or to just straight up turn people into zombies, depending on how the scientists are feeling that particular day. The Blood Dragons are just incredible to behold. 
but I would suggest not beholding them for too long because they will come bounding at you with their teeth bared and their claws ready to slice into your flesh. It is advised if you want to take them down that you try to do so from a distance, as having a giant dinosaur left over from the Cretaceous period making its merry way towards you with the intention to gobble you up does not make for the most optimum of days out. Black Knight, Dark Souls. When you sign up for a job, generally you hope that the description doesn't include a clause that stipulates that should you happen to fight a couple of really nasty demons, you might end up charred beyond recognition and wandering into a world half between life and death. However, signing up for this job is exactly what the Silver Knights of Gwyn in Dark Souls did, and that resulted in them becoming the Black Knights. With their jet black armour that still has the delightful burn effect on it, they are easily a head taller than the player, a subtle reminder of their former glory. They carry huge shields and swords that are flat bladed and wide at the top, covered in a smattering of blood. The swords are, objectively, one of the coolest things about them. Their horn helmets lend an eerie quality too, giving them a vaguely demonic aura, which, in the world of Dark Souls, can only work in their favour. While this list is about enemies who are almost too cool to kill, this goes double for the Black Knights. They're incredibly hard to fell in your first playthrough, so taking them down is doubly unappealing. I mean, you can just sit in the stairwell below them and watch them stab the air for a while instead of dying a horrible death, which is, in my opinion, slightly more preferable. Cerberi, God of War 3. Cerberi are a staple monster of the God of War series. These three headed menaces are hard to miss. The best iterations by far are from the third main installment and appear primarily in the underworld, most commonly in the form of the Whelp. These little buggers often attack in packs and are very lethal when paired with multiple stronger enemies, but their molten design is pretty neat to say the least. The Hades Cerberus are proper three-headed beasts that lunge forward and swipe at Kratos or launch fireballs in his direction. They can even leap upon you if you're not careful, but you may have your revenge as you cut off their heads one at a time. Mongrels are rarer, appearing with torn flesh just as ravenous and are cool in how you can ride upon their backs and use their special fire abilities against your enemies. Finally, the strongest of all, the Hades Cerberus Breeder, only appears once and it is completely molten, able to produce many explosive whelp offspring at its command. Many believe it could be the origin of all hounds in the series, and given how strong it is, as well as its station, this certainly could be the case. As a bonus, Hades summons spectral Cerberus mongrels during his battle. Cerberi, running the underworld after Hades falls. Who says you can't teach old dogs new tricks? Centurion, Prey, 2006. Holy sh is the most appropriate description of this beast provided by the protagonist Tommy as he watches the first one of the game make its appearance. They are buff, menacing warriors who are dreaded even amongst the ranks of the sphere. It's not hard to see why as they can literally tear down walls and pillars to get to you. It's such a David vs Goliath battle that you feel pretty awesome going up against one. What's fantastic is, in order to attain one of their powerful dual arm cannons, you have to slice it off their arm using a force field. Epic. These things aren't just cool, they make you feel cool in their presence. Until you get squished, of course. D-Roy, Earth Defense Force 4.1. From the moment you spot one of these mechs on the horizon, they instantly snare your attention with their enormous stature and balletic glide over buildings and across wide areas. D-Roys either lie in wait amongst buildings or drop down from Earth Eaters in the sky, and upon their arrival are both beautiful and deadly. Their long legs carry whirling laser beams that can slice and stun enemy combatants in a marvellous yet deadly light show. Their cannons pack a massive punch, but their signature move 
is extending their massive legs to stab at the player with their razor sharp ends, sometimes from far across the map. What also makes them especially cool is how each leg run can be destroyed to drop health and special weaponry, making farming these creatures a great opportunity for completionists. Never underestimate them however, because both small and large versions of the D-Roy are easily capable of killing you. Lambent Berserker – Gears of War 3 Gears of War just has that absolute cool factor that we seem to keep coming back to in this list with their enemies, and it's pretty obvious why when you have a plethora of badass aliens to choose from who are more often than not huge and glow in some sort of way. It's easy to see why they deserve the spots they have on this list. However, one of the coolest enemies that exist in Gears of War are the Lambent Berserkers. They are somewhat like the Berserker enemies, but stronger, faster, better and equipped with giant tentacles to whip in the general direction of anyone and anything that seems even remotely unappealing to them. The only way to take them down is to follow the strategy of waiting until their chest cavity opens up, leaving them vulnerable to your shots. However, this also means that the Lambent Berserker is ready to charge you, so be careful of where you place yourself, and every time you do more damage to one of them, they become increasingly angry and dangerous. Their glowing insides that are encapsulated by their alien skin are entrancing to look at, and their mutated faces serve to break this spell quite effectively. Just make sure not to get too caught up in all of the pretty lights. These enemies are dangerous and they will fell you very easily if you're not too careful. Hector Mark II Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon Hectors are the most human-like of the Ravager forces, but they are far from being any friendlier. The Mark II is a skyscraper behemoth and carries very powerful beam cannon and energy volley that can stop you dead in your tracks even killing you outright in some circumstances. Watching one of them stride easily across the map is a spectacle in and of itself, but once it fixes its gaze on you, you know you're in for a world of hurt. Their massive wave attacks look awesome even if you're caught in its wake, but the coolest thing about it is its sleek black on red design, prominent spines, and the loud groans that mark its presence. One or more of these in a map and you know you've got a satisfying challenge ahead from beginning to their explosive end. Dragons, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim Pretty much the whole point of the main story in this installment of the Elder Scrolls series is the dragons, so it was to be expected of Bethesda that the dragons in this game would be awesome, and, of course, they delivered. The flying serpents are huge, their semi-transparent wings allowing for little light to shine through as they circle the skies above the dragonborn, roars filling the air. When they finally land, the entire ground shakes and the player is faced with a mouthful of teeth and eyes that seem to be filled with both endless knowledge and pure anger. At first, they can make you feel somewhat diminutive, especially in the opening sequence at Helgen, Alduin. The main antagonist of the story appears there, and his enormous frame blocks out the sun as he spews fire. This makes for quite the introduction as you find yourself unarmed, but as you progress through the game, the thought of taking on dragons gets more and more exciting. The other great thing about taking on dragons? More often than not, defeating them allows you to learn more dragon shouts from the walls behind them. And who doesn't want more supernatural power? Revenant, Doom 2016. It's a skeleton with rocket launchers that can fly. Who can ask for more? There's a reason it's on the cover of the game and on all the promotional ads. The Revenant not only looks cool, it is cool. Heck, it's the first demon you get to play as in the multiplayer. They're just such a joy to hear and see and fight. Every battle is epic. Beyond all that, they're also incredibly fun to kill. The glory kills you can get on these things are so sweet and satisfying that you almost feel like you're bathing in the blood of demon spawn. The fact that these things only exist because people volunteer to be turned into them is also admirable to say the least. 
kudos to those guys. Not worrying about the mortal pain, bone stretching, flesh tearing, organ disintegrating horror. Revenants are cool. Enough said. Stormbirds, Horizon Zero Dawn. Resembling the legendary Thunderbird of North American indigenous culture, Stormbirds are one of the largest hostile machines in the game. They possess total air superiority and are often seen in flight on the lookout for prey, which they can attack formidably both from far range and up close. Notable Stormbird sites are west of Dawn Sentinel, northeast of Morning's Watch, past Pitchcliff at the northmost point of the map, and southeast of Meridian, with only one spawning to the path of the Gaia Ruins. What makes these beasts so cool, aside from being giant mechanical eagles, is the vast array of attacks that keep every encounter with one fast-paced, exciting, and adaptive. Its beak smash, tail lash, claw swipe, hurricane blast, screech blast, electric field, thunder bomb runs, lightning blast, and crash landings combine to make one fierce foe that you'll never tire of. In the end, once the husk of the storm bird lays in ruins, you will truly feel like you've earned the glory of your kill. Ogreman, Resident Evil 6. Standing at over 30 feet tall, Ogremen are the result of a desperate attempt by the Edonian Liberation Army to drive out the superior Bioterror Security Assessment Alliance forces. Chris and Piers encounter the very first of their kind, despite the fact that its designers knew the design was incomplete and still vulnerable. However, that doesn't mean these lumpy sacks are any less dangerous. They have some serious crushing power, able to destroy anti-aircraft turrets with a single punch and hurt anyone in a close radius, even by falling on them. They look absolutely disgusting with skin stretched over their mutated and spiky bone mass. Nobody knows if it was created from just one human or multiple, but everyone can agree that it has a very ugly face. But its most notable feature is the large sack poking out of its neck that is clearly the weak point of the creature. The coolest part about this boss is just its immense size and your method of taking it down. By sticking a large spike into its neck over and over and over again until it can't stand no more. Make no mistake, however, as the Ogreman is just as deadly as disgusting. It can pick up a player unexpectedly, slam its foot down upon them, and even hurl vehicles at the player. And then there's the bit where it melts into a disgusting sludge, leaving only a puddle and a reward for your hard time spent. Thanks. Hell Knight, Doom 3. Making a grand entrance in the Delta Labs, the Hell Knight is instantaneously recognizable and visually stunning. Despite having most of the same moveset as the Imp, its attacks deal substantially more damage and its swipe attacks keep you from getting too close, so the chainsaw is more or less a bad idea. Hell Knights have a greyish appearance with a domed head and missing nose, with ears and eyes hidden in the skin. However, in Hell they appear darker and bloodier, with pentagrams carved into their foreheads. These beasts look, feel and sound like proper demons, hellish nightmares that will stalk you to the ends of Mars, let your guard down around a Hell Knight and they will easily bring about your doom. Big Daddy, Bioshock. Often held as one of the most iconic enemies in the history of gaming, Big Daddies are humanoid masses of metal that are simultaneously incredible and extremely daunting. While there are a number of designs across the series, the most memorable is the Bouncer. Their massive caged heads with their glowing eyes and hulking stance make for quite the sight, and as Jack approaches them, their low, baleful moans warn him away. Visually, the Big Daddies are amazing, but they also have a fascinating backstory. They are individuals that have had their bodies grafted onto the massive diving suits that their bodies now inhabit, a genetic experiment conducted in order to structure. One of the coolest things about them, however, is their pure and admirable dedication to their charges, the Little Sisters. They will guard them with their lives and are willing to sacrifice themselves in order to protect them. Lastly, the fights with the Big Daddies are absolutely exhilarating. With their charge attacks and the feeling of the floor shaking beneath you as you are pursued, there's nothing quite like it and every second will have you swinging between pure fear and excitement in anticipation of the results. Wizards, Borderlands 2, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. 
Sometimes, there's nothing better than a good old traditional enemy, one seen countless times in countless forms of media, imagined by people for decades, and enshrined in the minds of many as a stereotypical image that can never be shaken, no matter how hard one might try to dislodge the thought. The wizards are a picture-perfect representation of a fantasy wizard, with their long white hair and beard, crooked hat, flowing robes, and staff. The only vaguely offset thing in their entire appearance is their glowing eyes. But hey, it's the Borderlands. Nobody's perfect, and everyone's a little weird. While they fit the wizened old mystical man description, the wizards are actually pretty difficult to take on if not approached correctly. They have the ability to teleport wherever they wish, allowing them to obliterate your shield if you're not careful, and they have an arsenal of spells at their immediate disposal to use however they wish. Fire mages use a bombardment of pyromancy and can call forth flaming phoenixes. Ice wizards launch powerful ice shards and icicle traps. Their ultimate power is summoning a fierce blizzard that shoots down dangerous projectiles. Finally, the Necromancer, who is able to launch souls from his staff, as well as raise the undead from their slumber. You can lower all the wizard's health effectively by going all in and tearing them to shreds before they get a chance to float away to anywhere that gives them respite. And besides, what could be more enjoyable than killing senior citizens who dabble in the dark arts to live out your Dungeons & Dragons fantasy? Lynels, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild In the expansive world of Breath of the Wild, there's plenty of areas and enemies to occupy your time. However, sometimes something turns up that is just too awesome to be ignored. Lynels are one of those somethings. Apparently one of the most ancient residents of the land of Hyrule, they've had years upon years to hone their combat skills. They are huge, centaur-like creatures with the face and mane of a lion, but the horns of a bull. Their manes come in a variety of colors, red, white, blue, and silver, and all of these denote a different level of difficulty. But of course, with this higher difficulty comes the chance to reap greater rewards. Lynels have one of the highest HP levels in the game, and come with a multitude of heavy attacks including rushing Link and swinging at him with a huge sword. These attacks can be countered, and one of the ways to do that is to grab onto the back of them and hold on for dear life as they attempt to dislodge you as you stab wildly with your weapon, almost like the Colossus battles from Shadow of the Colossus. They are highly perceptive and can spot you even from the edges of their vision, and if this happens, you'll be at risk for their long-range magic attacks. While they may be incredibly difficult to down, there's nothing like the satisfaction of downing a Lynel, and then maybe chucking their remains into a stew and seeing what happens.